Hey guys, welcome to the 13th episode of The Metal Intent, the show where we talk to your favorite musicians, producers, content creators. We figure out the intent behind their music journey. So the 13th episode is a very special one we have with us today, Andy Sizik. How are you doing, man? Hey, I am excellent. How are you, Joao? I am doing very good as well. Thank you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's, do you like music, Andy? <laughs> nah, nah. It's, uh, it sucks. <laughs> music. And, uh, I can't imagine a life with it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You have tons of stuff to talk about when it comes to music, musical output, music groups. So what I'm interested in, to give context, is how does, how does little Andy first meet music? Like, what's your first... What's a music story or a first music story that you can, can recall that's relevant? Something um, like that. Let me think. So uh, I guess my earliest music memories would be uh, me chilling in my dad's room, um, probably like a toddler, and he's got on these uh, Led Zeppelin live DVD, not DVDs, VHSs, right? right this is the yeah. 90s. Um, and, and me seeing like androgynous dressed Robert Plant, super skinny, <laughs> flipping his hair around. So, oh, oh. And oh. I was like, what is that? Um, and uh, then, then there, he would put on stuff like Kiss too, uh, mm. or The Who. Um, basically, I was surrounded by classic rock from a young age because my father played a lot of classic rock. Uh, he's also a guitar player and a singer. Nice. And uh, he was in rock bands, too. So I just uh, grew up surrounded by it. Um, I see. And I suppose that eventually manifested itself into some sort of love for rock music. Yeah. The f same story. Like, sh shout out dads across the world. Shout out to dads getting their, their kids unknowingly into metal. Into heavy, slowly. heavy stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anger. Do yeah. you show, like, the stuff you do to your dad and he'll be like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, definitely at first for a long time, actually. Like, uh, my dad would say, I, I just don't get the screaming thing. It, exactly. Like, cool, yeah. I don't get the screaming thing. Um, but now that I've been doing it for over 10 years, he does understand it more. And right. He's actually come to me and been like, Andy, now I know the difference between like a bad scream and a good scream. And oh, I think I'm starting to get it. So it's not like his cup of tea. He, there's no way my dad's ever going to put on metal and just be like, yes. Yeah. And he, he probably, if, if I'm lucky, will, you know, listen to my song once when it comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And be like, hey, you know. Nice job. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or something. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a different world than, than what he came from. Of obviously. course, of course it is. That's, that's, why, that's why we like it, because it's absolutely different. I, I like that one. you, yeah, I like that you said... Um, that you noticed Robert Plant and um, please, uh, Robert Plant is the singer. I'm not wrong. Okay. Yep. 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 My Led Zeppelin is not. I, no, <laughs> I it's, do it's not fine. know my Zepp. Yeah. But I am curious. You, you, you did mention the singer. What a, did something about vocals and singing pull you in at at first immediately? That's interesting. I actually never thought of it because, like, yeah. When you ask me what my earliest memory is, I, I instantly think of Robert Plant up mm. there. I don't think of Jimmy Page playing guitar. Right. So maybe, yeah, maybe there was some sort of a subconscious um, yearning to do that because that's what I remember. Mm. Um, I mean, the camera also loves Robert Plant, so uh, <laughs> what you're he was gonna probably do? just on screen a lot. But yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. To be honest, like, I actually started playing guitar. My, my dad bought me a guitar when oh. I was like 11. $99 Fender Squire. Of course. And I started taking lessons. And I got good enough to be a mediocre, like, rhythm guitar player and, and play power chords and chugs. Um, but once I discovered I could sing, I sort of just, like, put guitar by the wayside and focused on, on singing and vocals. So, uh, yeah, perhaps there is always an inherent desire for me to do it. Um, because as soon as I learned that I could, I, uh, lost interest in guitar. I see. Yeah. yeah. I, th that, that's, that's exactly what I would imagine would happen. You never pick up, picked up any instrument after you just said, I mean, I, 
I'm like so mediocre at guitar and I can play a little bit of piano. I took some piano lessons okay. too, to to supplement my my ear and I guess I was trying to learn a little theory too. Um but Good. no. Like I suck at everything. Basically, I can <laughs> I can write stuff, but I can't play no good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, singing, singing is special. Vocals just are special. Like in every song, you are gonna just be drawn to the human voice. Like we have evolved for um, years and years and years from monkey brain to recognize human voice. Literally, yeah. There's always going to be something special as much as we can love instrumental music about about the vocal. It's always it's always something we call a lead vocal, literally. Yeah. And um especially in heavy music, it's it is special because there's lots of different stuff and I'm wondering um did you first start only singing and then figuring out new sounds? related to screaming in yeah. heavy music mm-hmm. how did that absolutely go? yeah um i guess i started singing when i was like 14 or 15 and this was like what was i into at the time like green day and and my chemical romance cool um and and breaking benjamin and stuff so that for for all intents and purposes is singing um and so that's where i started um and i I guess I was singing for like two years before I started to try to scream. I think mm-hmm. it was like the Devil Wears Prada and Atreyu and stuff. Okay. Um, a little bit of Avenged Sevenfold too um, introduced me to that world. And I was still pretty new to singing, but I was like, oh, that's sick. I got to learn how to do that. Um, and I think the, the knowledge of, of already understanding how to, how to belt and... Uh, mm-hmm. I think it jump started my my screaming journey, but not right. by a lot. It's it it still took a long, long time before I could do anything that was uh what represents any semblance of, of being good. Right. Um but the singing came first. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense that just the fact that you already just know how to push air, that you just you wouldn't just know then later learn how to do the different throat shape or, or mouth shape that would mm-hmm. create a scream yeah because yeah the fundamentals are are similar right a lot of people that would that just want to do screaming um skip they don't skip some of them actually do learn but if you learn singing first and you just learn how your muscles work to push air it would make sense that it would help that it would help, but I bet that you you still struggled. Are you the type of guy that blew out his voice over and over? Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, when I started, I had no fucking clue. What I was just yelling. And, yeah. And shredding my throat, even with singing. Like, I hmm. just did what I thought was right. Um, right. And then I would be hurting my voice and stuff. Um. And it got to the point where I was like, I think I'm doing damage um, because my throat hurts all the time. Right. And I went to an ENT, a a ear, nose, and throat doctor, and they looked at my folds and like, yeah, it's not looking pretty good. Like, if you want to have a career as a singer or whatever, you should probably learn how to breathe correctly and start from the bottom. Because I was just going off of pure instinct and rage. um, Yep. And I had no idea how to do anything. So they sent me to a speech pathologist um Mm. and i learned how to properly breathe this had nothing Mm. to do wow excuse me this had (laughs) nothing to do in in line yeah (laughs) um this had nothing to do with uh like screaming or even singing necessarily but just how to vocalize properly so Mm. it started with learning to use my core and my diaphragm to control airflow versus doing everything from my chest and neck which up until that point i was um, mm. And when that began, the speech pathology, pathology, it like changed my perspective, and uh, I became much more diligent and studious about vocals right. and, and learning how to. I was like, oh, there's a real science to all of this, and I should stop trying to be prideful and ignore it. Like, I right. never, never had proper training. I'm just this good. Like, fuck that. Um, yep. Let's actually open my mind and um, 
I'm so glad that I did because when I, as soon as I started, I, I just, um, my, my mind shifted to, I, I just felt like I had laser focus on, uh, on, on getting to the next step and, um, doing things in a healthy way. I, I, I went back to see my ENT like six months later and he was like, yeah, it's looking really good now. You're on the right track. Uh, keep it up. Follow your dreams. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, so Hell from yes. then on, I, I've been pretty obsessive about learning technique and uh, how stuff works instead of just trying to force it out and hurt myself. And make the sound happen. I, I love hearing that because this is so the metal intent, which is we talk about music and then we get to stuff that like is, is at our core. You're talking about breathing. Like breathing is, is literally our, our livelihood. It is to it is to breathe, and uh, in they don't teach you how to breathe in school. It, it it's that's such a stupid sentence to say without any context. Right, but, because you just do it. It's like, right it's something automatic. Yeah, but you can be just doing it like not in the most efficient way, like knowing that it can come from your stomach, or you can have it lightly just go to the chest and back. There are yeah. so many everybody ways learns, to breathe. Everybody learns on their own differently. And wherever yeah. you land is, is just, you know, it's kind of random. Um, so a lot of it is breaking down old bad habits and relearning. Exactly. Um, yeah. I guess like uh, when we think about aggressive music, at least for me, I think like, or I used to think like, oh, it's got to like be like from the chest and like a lot of power and just pushing and forcing and I feel it here but um that's not really the case uh a healthy way to to do it is it's a lot more outside the box than that it takes more critical thinking and uh it's it's stuff that many many humans have have studied and learned throughout human history way before right. I started doing vocals you know what I mean so it's the cumul cumulative knowledge of vocal health um versus Whatever I learned as a baby <laughs> up exactly. until now. Yeah. yeah. And it can be hard hard to unlearn those habits because it's fucking breathing and you've been you've, doing it. You've been doing life. it yeah. a whole life. <laughs> yeah. Very, very difficult. Yeah, yeah. Like when you there's like when you tell someone to breathe deep and they're like like the shoulders go up, like stuff oh, like that. Yep. Exactly. Know? And that's I was like immediately told that was bad. <sighs> Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not good. Don't do that. Yeah. And that's all I And was the doing. thing is is that it's it's not just of course vo of course it affects vocals, but it's like it's like your whole life. Like you're not uh, oxygenating your body as much as you should be. Like sometimes you'll be stressed out or sometimes you'll be tired. You don't know why. Like you're literally <laughs> not giving your brain oxygen. Yeah. Do you find that having learned those things about breathing? Like that they, they might have changed the, the course of like all your mental capacity or mental health. Like if I don't know how old you are now, but imagine you would still be breathing through your shoulders all those years. Do you think you'd be a different person? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting theory. Uh, I'm 28 for yeah. the record right now. Okay. Um, but here's the thing. I think that we're still getting proper oxygen no matter how you're breathing. But the issue hmm. is, is what it's doing to your voice. Because um, if you spend your entire life breathing wrong and then vocalizing with the wrong breathing techniques, just speaking and doing exactly. normal, Tired of normal talking, you will, you will fuck yourself. So that's why you hear a lot of older people with like the raspiest voices ever or whatever, because they probably never learned how to properly breathe and they've been vocalizing off of poor techniques for their entire life. Um, so, no, I don't think it's like, oh, I'm not getting enough air to my brain. I think it's just like I've been hurting myself. I've been okay. damaging my vocal yeah. cords uh, over my entire life because I never properly learned the breath support. Um, and hmm. support is the key word because your voice needs uh, proper support uh, to, to healthily vocalize. Otherwise, you'll have a bad time. Yeah. Cool. I find myself at the end of these podcasts sometimes tired of my voice. And um, yeah, it's because yeah. I'll, I'll just be talking 
out of the chest and and stuff like that. So yeah, I think it's interesting that that people consider it. I I really like the topic of breathing in in all of that. So the way it relates to of course vocals, it's it's obviously super important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So singing um when did you uh from singing as a hobby started uh either what was first like did you have a little group did the cover videos start first what when does the the music journey kind of start right the timeline um yeah yeah <laughs> it was like uh i played oh, excuse me i played a lot of video games um that was mm-hmm. my hobby rock band came out right you remember rock band mm. Yeah. Um, and I was doing the vocals a lot. And that oh. was like my first initial practice was just cool. doing songs on rock band uh, as a young teen. And I would be doing it with my friends who uh, some of them were also musical and they'd be like, oh, shit, Andy, you're pretty good. You're, you're a pretty good singer. Um, so eventually, like my my buddy's high school band needed a singer and they they hit me up because of the rock band stuff. Um, oh, of and course. we did like our, our talent shows and shit like that. Uh, played at some coffee shops here and there. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that went on for a while, just being in and out of uh, young bands as a teen and just tr- trying to ha- make it and have fun and being starry eyed, not knowing what the fuck we were doing. Um, <laughs> and I think after it was like, I was in this like metalcore band that that um broke up or whatever we stopped doing music and I was like man you know I I don't want to have to rely on other people to get my name out there in the music there business I just want to be able to like do this myself so I went out and like I bought a fucking like a Pod X3 and Logic Express software and a shitty preamp I was literally recording vocals into my pod um, hmm. with a preamp, like an external, um, you know, MP or something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just started like farting out shitty covers on YouTube. Um, I think like the, the first serious one was Dance Gavin Dance on the run. That was when I was trying to be like, I'm a vocalist and here's my vocal cover. Um, yeah, yeah. That was when I started pushing myself to sing higher and, and stuff like that. Um, and that got a pretty good response. So I kept going with it and I got really ambitious and I was just covering anything I could. Um, I joined up with my band Wander shortly after that began. And then Wander started getting some opportunities. I think people were sort of finding out about my bands through my YouTube a little bit and maybe vice versa. Yeah. Um, it was all pretty small. It's not like I was exploding um, on the Internet, but that's how I, I began. And um, then I would do, I did like the volumes auditions when volumes was looking for a singer. Um, Mm. And those, it's not like I got the spot, but they went pretty far. Those helped get my name out a lot because everyone was like Googling like volumes auditions, keeping track, looking at all the different vocalists and entries. So I was among that. Um, And that kept me going, kept doing the covers. Uh, And then there was the, the Sumerian audition competition thing. Uh, where I did, I wrote to the song that the instrumental that they provided. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, Sumerian Records did a thing where they're like, we got a secret project with some of our artists. Here's an instrumental. We're looking for a singer. Write and record cool. your audition. So I did. And um, that was like my most successful YouTube thing um, at the time. And I think that's what like began the the real opportunities and um nice yeah. people finding out about me and uh, that that probably helped get me the the rest of the gigs um yeah i went on tour with wander uh and makari was was on tour with us um and then they lost oh. the vocalist and they they hit me up um okay and then there was there was uh the monuments thing which i did i covered one of their songs i like you know how we do it we recreate the instrumental Yep. Um, and I pushed myself to do that uh, and then put the vocals over it. And that was, I knew they were having problems with their vocalists because I was friends with Ollie at the time. and He was yeah. talking about how it wasn't working out. So I was like, let me get this cover done just, 
just in case, Who knows? like a hail mary, yeah. you know. And uh, sure That's enough, so cool. it it led to me joining the band ultimately. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, there's a little recap, I guess. Yeah, that's I I like hearing it. I like hearing it. So, so I myself know that's that is pretty cool. I like that you talked about your intent at the beginning was oh was kind of the opposite of what then happened, which which is interesting. You said, um, I want to take and I relate. I want to take matters into my own hands. Like I can make uh, content myself. I can get my name out there. And and not necessarily need uh, four other dudes, so I can I could put in mm-hmm. some work and mm-hmm. and people will notice, and then that work is what got you to connect with other dudes then to yeah, to go yeah. on other gigs. So I'm interested. Yeah, uh, if it first started as like okay, let's take a break from bands, into an opportunity for you to get into other bands. Yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, the way I saw it was like I was trying to get out of that of that level where the only people I have to work with are like dudes from my town, yeah. random, random dudes. I'm looking for a guitar player, looking for a drummer. Um, and the pickings were slim. And it just that's like you can't rely on that. You can't rely yeah. on that to to further your life. So I was like, well, I want to be discovered by like more than just whoever's in my town. The greats. Um, yeah. I want to be amongst the greats. I don't know. And so I, <laughs> I guess I realized that, that being able to, if I could demonstrate my value on the internet, then more uh, bigger opportunities would come um, bigger than just playing at my local fire hall with the same like 10 dudes that are in the music scene in, in my town. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was, it was like trying to get out of the kiddie pool and into the, okay. the deep end, basically. I see. Yeah, I mean this this that's just a super important tidbit for everyone. If some it's weird sometimes when people come to us and like, oh, I wish I could do what you do, but there's no people in my town that do this yeah, style yeah. of music. I mean, bro, yeah. we're on YouTube. We're not on we're not in our that town. Too. And that's what I always say. I say you can't wait around to, to find a magical uh, group, a town, ta- a bunch of talented people. Yeah, you gotta say that's out. rare. Like it has happened. Obviously, you've heard the stories, but that's rare. Of course, especially in this day and age. Now everyone's trying to make it. Everyone's out there, and it's becoming really saturated. But you, um, you have to prove to the world that you've got something to offer. And like people who are looking for band members, I always tell them just do everything yourself or with one the one person that that you have. You know, if you've got like a a musician buddy. Um, and make something fucking sick and then people will come and then because you can't really attract yeah. talent with nothing when you don't have a product right but if you make like a sick EP or something by yourself that's like pretty DIY but still awesome people here be like oh shit I want to get in on that you guys looking for a drummer and that's how it went down for me um, yeah I just I like I said I, I learned how to like program drums I got like superior drummer there's this dude, Cloud Kicker. Have you ever heard of Cloud Kicker? I've heard the name, um, yeah. Maybe a song or two. So it, it's like a solo instrumental prog artist. Janty, He's been yes. been around for a long time. And uh, I read his specs, like, you know, 10 years ago or plus, he posted his gear, and it was like Logic Express, a pod, and Superior Drummer. And right. I was like, hmm. I can do that, I think. Let me, let me try. So I did that, and and I sucked ass at first, but I kept working, I kept trying, I kept yeah. experimenting until I was able to put my own compositions together and do my own production. And um, if you look at my early YouTube videos, it 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 shows that sort of the 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 progression of that. Yeah. Um, but it wouldn't have happened. None of this would have happened if if I hadn't pushed myself to be like, well, I'm a singer, but I need to learn editing and production and a little bit of video stuff and I need to learn how to like write drums and um that way I can supplement what I really want to do. My intent was always to be on that stage and be performing and uh, I wanted to tour and see the world and show everyone what I got, you know what I mean? I love yeah. performing. At at the end of the day, like I love making records and stuff to remember me by and and things to be proud of. Um, but all of this was because I wanted to perform and tour. Um, that was the, always the goal. 
So uh, everything else was uh, the building blocks, um, stepping stones, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for me to get to that point where I was out there and touring and and stuff like that. Um, and I was really hitting my stride. Things were sick. Oh, yeah, of and course. Then we had the COVID-19 and, um, yeah, you know, lost lost a little bit of time. Of course. But, yeah, hitting your stride. Very cool. Yep. There you go. You did, you did it with intent. Yeah. Started we'll get the back videos. out there. We're, we're already getting back. No, there, so. we will. Yeah. Yeah. Last time we saw each other was in Barcelona, Spain. <laughs> Was it was a great gig? It was a while that. ago, wasn't that it? Was, it was a while ago. <laughs> it, it, you guys got that tour in like the day you you guys were leaving. She was dude. Getting I that. know we're so lucky, actually. Like if I if the tour had gone on one month longer, I would have just been stuck in Europe like indefinitely. Yeah, yeah, it would have been crazy. You'd um, still be as here as soon as I like, got you'd be home. Camping in like, my place, <laughs> dude. <laughs> lockdown yeah. yeah lockdown happened as soon as i got home so um i'm lucky we got it in good. i had a really good time yeah. on that on that tour i can't wait for the next monuments tour it'll be uh 2022 early 2022 i think but hell um, yes we'll be back yes everyone will be back that's cool in the meantime we are home and uh you've been You've been on Twitch a lot. I've talked with a lot of guests about, like, now that they are not touring, w what is happening? A lot of people go inside to make more music, to then later tour and to show the world. A lot of people uh, get into content creation. It was already familiar to us, so we already had something to fall back on. I mean, I didn't change, but you had to change and, like, yeah. uh, go do more content. And um, I've seen you on Twitch a lot. I like to talk about Twitch here. Do you enjoy your time on Twitch? Yes, absolutely. It's uh, honestly been like a godsend since touring has stopped. It's the next, especially when I can uh, perform on Twitch. It's like the next best uh, thing you can doing, perform. doing exactly. the shows. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not the same, of course, but being able to interact with fans and, and uh, all of that stuff again is is really nice um i think a lot of musicians would agree that it's it's kind of the next best thing um to what we're missing right now yeah it's very fun it's it's different than doing um videos it's mm -hmm. very direct live streaming yeah. is and and i i yeah, think it, that i'm sort of moving away from doing a lot of like the youtube covers and stuff which i still enjoy but now that i'm in, like i'm on twitch and i'm in four bands that constantly Right. Demand, you know, I need to write um, and get ready for the mm -hmm. next thing. There's less time uh, to put out YouTube content, but I'm okay with that because the YouTube content was always. A um, means to an end. And means to an end. Yes, yes. The goal was, was to get out of that world and uh, be touring and making records. So I am doing that now. Um, I'd still like to keep putting stuff out on YouTube, but it's definitely taken a backseat. Uh, past couple of years basically since i joined monuments um that yeah. was when it was like well i'm in too many groups uh to keep up with this as much so um and then twitch is just to be honest i have a lot more fun on twitch than trying to than doing videos yeah putting together videos yeah because um i don't know that's just so involved and taxing and it takes such a long time and um Twitch is, is more prosperous too, um, more interactive, more raw. Yeah. Um, not to say that YouTube isn't important and that stuff isn't awesome, um, but at least for right now, I've, I've been focusing more on Twitch. Yeah, it's it just the, the answer can be as simple as I just like it more. You like that yeah. more. <laughs> and yeah. um, at I, least I, right I get now it. I do. Yeah, right. Because it's different from person to person. Like, I love doing videos and they are, like you said, they're a lot more work than throwing up a stream, but we're different. I mean, you're a vocalist, you really are a performer. And like, I I get so tired doing a, doing a stream, for example. Like I get more tired doing a stream than like make, maybe doing a whole cover. So yeah. people should yeah. just capitalize on what they like and what they what synergizes with them the most, I think. It's definitely exhausting sometimes, and you have to have a lot of social energy, which I don't always have. 
Um, yeah. I'm not busting out like six hour streams. Usually I, I keep it to like two to three. Yeah. Um, but that's enough for me to feel satisfied. And, um, for instance, like perform a live vocal set. That's plenty of, plenty of time. Yeah. Um, I do miss working on the covers though. I, I still have like a lot in store. I've got like four unfinished covers and I'd like to get them done, but something keeps coming up every time. There's always a new yeah. deadline that I got to meet. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's good. That's if if people don't get YouTube videos, they they're gonna get like actual music. So don't worry, they'll get their their dose of Andy. <laughs> yes, you will. You will. Hell yes, very cool. I mean, yeah, you're in you're in four different bands. You're in Monuments. You're in Makari <laughs> Wonder and Nick in yeah. Termina, right? That's right. Yeah. So that's like four of them. Um, what's the best question? I I am interested. Do you feel like you scratch a different itch which with each band? Like Yes, definitely. What, that's what, uh, what does Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why like you have a, a lot of part them. of it. Yeah. Um Yeah. I I love different genres and obviously growing up it was like everything from classic rock to to pop punk to metal and deathcore and um just basically everything in the falls under the rock category. Um and I think that, like, because I've developed my voice a lot over the years and, and pushed myself to do all the different covers, um, I've, I've accumulated a lot of ability and techniques that can be applied to different genres. Yeah, and relate. I love those genres. I, I love, I, there's times where I want to be the heaviest I can be, go as low as I can and as brutal as possible. And I have Termina for that, thankfully. That's awesome. Um, whereas like Monuments is another metal project, but, um, it's not so much about being brutal. It's about yeah. being full aggressive and, and tasteful and, and dynamic. Yeah. And that's where it's like, okay, I can focus more on that. Um, and, and, and the, the, the singing and the screaming, it, the interplay between that, I love it. Um, and it's not as scary, I guess you could say, but then <laughs> yeah. there's Makari and, and that is like, I love the post hardcore world i love dance gavin dance and uh everything that falls under that web always have um and makari allows me to fulfill that that need um to to do the melodic thing um and i really enjoy it it's really fun um those vibes are so different uh i'm an angry guy that needs to put out angry music but i also have like you know, i'm sensitive and um different feelings that aren't necessarily brutal anger um yeah but maybe something more vulnerable um that i can express with makari or wander uh which was my first group um before i was even in any metal bands and i guess that one's more um the most personal because the writing is mm. very inward and um i i get to say what i what i feel like i need to get off of my chest um in a more delicate way that I couldn't do with with bands like Termina, um, right? They're all fun yeah. for different reasons. I think if I had to, if I was forced to to choose just one, it would be metal, probably because that's where my heart is. But mm. I, it's a tough call, man. It really is. Of course. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm insanely lucky that I can uh, tap into all of those facets of music, and um, since I was uh, given this this gift that i've been able to hone in on of, of vocals uh, i should use it right i should uh, use it to the fullest extent i have problems saying no uh fear of missing out kind of rules my life yeah I <laughs> um i just want to do it all i i believe that we get one life and one shot um yeah so if i can then i should why not um i am wary of of burnout but right so far my creative energy has sustained and um, um, I feel really good about uh, everything that I've accomplished so far uh, with the different groups. It's beautiful. That feels, it feels just Thanks. like your repertoire. It's in all the bands, just very holistic, very full range. When you were talking about that, I was wondering, do you think it makes you a better band member? Because like in the sense of 
it, when you want to express some more sensitive stuff, some softer stuff, like you don't have to go to Nick and Terminator and be like, yo, I'm sad today. <laughs> you yeah, could just I, save I that know. for other bands. Like, there is still, there's sadness in all of the music, for sure. There's all cr um, crossovers, yeah. I But I think what it, what it comes down to is, like, how does the instrumental make me feel? Because yeah. I, it, I go out into life and I experience sadness and anger and happiness and um, whatever else there is, the, the whole emotional spectrum. I take from life, maybe I'll, if, if I want to, if I think of, like, something cool, to write down and save for later like i can use this over an angry track or i can use this over a over an ambient track and then i get the instrumental and like this reminds me of how i felt that one time mm -hmm. um and i can apply those feelings to like the angry song or or the soft song um so yeah uh it's sort of like a combination of what i've felt in life and and what the instrumental provokes out of me yeah, yeah, that that goes right into talking about the writing. I don't know if it writing. makes me a, a good band member or not. But. <laughs> yeah, right. It's more than that. But that facet of being able to express different stuff with different bands will help you not like, yo, I really want to do this now. Because you have like yeah. a lot of options of, of people yeah. that you can just take uh -huh. that to. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. But yeah, writing. I'm very interested in writing because, again, lyrics and vocals. And I was going to ask, and it seems like you've answered almost, does, does the instrumental always come first? And apparently, it's like you will sometimes have a vibe or a text without the instrumental, but uh, the instrumental will always like dictate yeah. ev everything. Quote -unquote. I get that a lot. Yeah, because I don't like to write like deaf poetry or whatever and then try right. to glue it onto an instrumental that yeah because it, it it it's just forced for me at least like you can try to mold what you have to the song and and that works sometimes but i prefer writing the vocal based off of the feel of the instrumental be, because it just mm -hmm. it makes so much more sense like like i'll i'll get the instrumental from the band and we'll work on it we'll tweak it together it's not like it's like often I'll I'll double a chorus or I'll cut out like part of a verse or whatever I think the vocals need, um, and uh, we'll just go back and forth. Um, I, I'll usually like write up a paragraph. What do I want to say on this song after I've heard the instrumental, and then I'll get out like my rhyming dictionary and um, a thesaurus and whatever. Uh, how can yeah. I most poetically uh, express what I want to say that fits on this instrumental and. Um, I just work on it until I'm satisfied. Sometimes banging my head against the wall. It feels like a puzzle. Every time I get an instrumental yeah. and then I, I figure out what I want to say, it's like a puzzle. How can I fit it um, and uh, do it well, uh, elegantly? Yeah. And um, yeah, that, that's my process, at least. Uh, I know that lots of people write differently, but for me, that has always worked out the best. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. It, it relates to how I write the instrumentals, which is I, I also have a vibe and I'm also solving the puzzle, like what note, what, what note here, what chord here, what rhythm yeah. here. So, so yeah, yeah, you're just doing that on top of what would be the instrumental and then, of course, collaborating with the band so that the instrumental can sometimes also adapt to your, to yes, your message. Yes, exactly. And I really like to to write with a jumping off point versus totally from scratch because yeah. like the, I don't know I work better with with guidelines and, and rules I think a little bit like uh when when I'm given like a space to operate in uh I'm a lot more capable than if it's just like nothing give me do something. whatever yeah. and I'm like Zero I, to I, one. I don't know I'm very in, indecisive so I like having uh some rules and guidelines and, and boundaries to that I can, it, like, that's what makes it a puzzle. I have to figure out how to operate within those boundaries. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it shows in your style where you're very you're very rhythmical with the guitars. You almost feel like you're a member of the of the band. Yeah, the yeah. You know, like, I love that. I love that. Like songs like Animus, where you go do 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 
do yeah do 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 you're literally exactly. singing that same rhythm uh-huh yeah and, uh, i think there was this anoop says accessory song where you sang on that you you literally just sing the guitar riff but yeah. you're it's so da, 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 sick <laughs> you i love doing that and uh <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things um because like you can you can write a vocal pattern over something that plays with it and then you can go back if that part comes back and do it like to the rhythm and it it gives it a a different feel yeah. i don't know i've always liked shit like that um i like rhythmic screaming almost where it verges on rap um that's my shit i love that stuff super cool man yeah i'm wondering if if uh, if there's anything, any music recently like that that has been inspiring you to to try something new or just a new sound that you've heard, or do you have any like recent inspiration that has has made you think like, damn, this is cool? Anything it's like really that? It's really hard for me to. I don't know where I got that from. I don't know why I started doing that. I think like I used to listen to a lot of like volumes. And old Attila and stuff yeah. like that. That's um, very jumpy and very, rhythmic, very yeah. rhythmic, genty, um, periphery and and um I just loved how it sounded. And I, I thought it was just fucking badass and cool. Um and I've run with it. I I don't know if there's been anything super recent that I can say has heavily influenced my style. Everything does a little bit. Every time I hear something yeah. new, I'm like, oh, I gotta figure out how to do that and incorporate it. Um but most of my uh, my stylings or whatever uh, you want to call it, it's come from what I learned uh, in my in my early twenties. I want to say felt like a crucial time of development for vocals for me. Um, yeah, but it's all cumulative. Everything from um, Green Day and Breaking Benjamin to uh, whatever the hell I'm listening to now. Right. Yeah, that that makes sense sonically, and in more in more abstract terms, like of course we all draw upon our own experience and our own emotions. But I had a, a great podcast with Andromeda with Ramon, and uh, he has a lot to to attribute to games, and I think you also have to video games. Oh, I'm interested. Hell yeah! Yeah. Hell yeah! Son. How how what do you what do you have to say about games and your music? Well, let's start with what we already talked about. Rock band pretty much got oh, me to come course, out of, of my course. shell as a yeah. singer. I don't know if I could have, because I was so shy and nerdy and introverted, and I still am for sure at heart, um, but I was a gaming nerd. So I think, I think yeah. that was like my excuse to sing. I always wanted to, and I always knew that I could do it, but I didn't have an excuse um, because I was too <laughs> embarrassed and, and prideful and, you know, whatever. Um, so that was like my, my opening when, when I'd be singing, I'd be like, yeah, I'm just trying to like beat a level, you know, <laughs> whatever. Like, I don't care. Okay. Um, but really I was like, I want to, I want to sing. Um, so that helped me get, get myself out of that, uh, comfort zone a little bit. And then, um, when it comes to songwriting, I've written so many songs about myself, about personal experiences, about the state of the world, how I see things, whatever. Uh, sometimes it's nice, especially with metal, especially with deathcore and prog. Uh, sometimes it's nice to just tell a story, to, to write fiction. Um, I feel like metal and angry music gives me the ability to write like, a, like an evil supervillain sometimes. And mm. uh, a lot of that stuff, I draw in inspiration from video games. Um, I from, see. From, from like Majora's Mask, from Zelda, or Final Fantasy. I've written... I've written songs that are basically about Final Fantasy or basically about Majora's <laughs> Mask or even just stuff that's so esoteric that to me, I know what I was thinking of, but to the listener, it could be lots of, it could be interpreted lots of ways. But of course, yeah, like video games are a medium that have, that has always inspired me. And if I'm struggling to come up with inspiration for a song, um, I can always think back to, <laughs> like as nerdy as it sounds a sick ass game with a really cool narrative and um these concepts can be applied to many parts of life so it's not like most of the time if you hear a song from me that's like inspired by a game you aren't going to be like 
oh, this is the fucking Mario song or whatever. <laughs> Mario. Um, but for me, it, like, like maybe there was some inspiration drawn. You can make metaphors that are uh, applicable to a game and then applicable to who, who, who else? Of course. Um, yeah. So definitely uh, there, there's nerdiness creeping in whenever I write uh, fictional stories or even movies too or books. Yeah. Um, that's not, everybody does stuff like that. Uh, but course. because I was a gaming nerd, that's where it, it heavily leans toward. Yeah, I like that. I people always, I always incentivize people to, when it comes to influences and what do you want to say with your art, I always tell people to like think outside of just music, because we can, especially us instrumentalists, just fall into the trap of writing our favorite songs like. If we listen to a lot of this band, we write th like this band. And if we listen to the other band, we write like the other band. If I try to, for example, write inspired by this band and throw in Half-Life or throw in Final Fantasy, like something is going to change because I am trying to merge like music and a game mm -hmm. or, or you'd be yeah. merging mu band style in a movie. And... um just you could even book books or you can yeah it's even like just collaborating you with had. yeah it's like collaborate yeah it's like collaborating with the world um versus yeah. just being stuck inside your own head um which is also the beauty of being in a band um that's that's why writing yeah with working individuals with other people. is so sick yeah. versus just like i do it all myself which is cool there there's definitely a merit to that and yeah. i love solo stuff but uh, for instance, like in Macari, there's no way the lyrics would would turn out the way they are if I didn't write lyrics with Kevin, our drummer. Um, mm -hmm. In that in that band, I write lyrics with with him because he has a totally fresh perspective and a different approach to writing. He'll send me some shit that I can then take and jump off of. Like I said, I love having boundaries and then jumping off. Yeah. Of, um, and it's like, wow, this has now become this beautiful thing this creature that never would have been spawned if I had tried to tackle this on my own. So um, external stimuli, whether it be media or, or other minds, um, that makes a massive difference in, in the music. Yeah, absolutely. I like that very much. Well, Andy, I think it's been a, a sick episode. I think we got into a lot of great insights. Thank you so much. A cool conversation. I'll thank you and... Uh, Joe, wow, hell what's... yeah, man. I'm so <laughs> glad man, to be what... on, dude. I really, really appreciate yeah. it. That's cool. I'm I'm very happy you are. And um yeah, what's what's Andy in the future? Any anything that you want to say the to future, those people? Um uh be be ready for a new monument single extremely mm. soon. New oh, monuments yeah. album early That's next cool. year for sure. T uh, Termina two is already being worked on. And it's going to be Whoa. bigger and better than ever. Um, there is new Macari music that's been recorded already. Um, Wander is working on another album, too. Uh, I have another project that oh has been in the... It, the thing is, it's been, it's been in mixing hell for like two years. But it's, I think it's going to come out. Yeah, it's been in developmental purgatory. <laughs> Um, so lots of stuff <laughs> happening. Keep your eyes peeled. Hopefully more collabs with you, Joao. Uh, I'd love to do some more stuff. Um, we yeah. have done the spirit box cover together, of course. Um, that was sick. But let's make time for more. And yeah, I'm always moving, always creating new material. Um, please check me out on Twitch if you haven't yet. Catch him on Twitch, yeah. Uh, I'll be doing performances and other fun stuff, music production related or otherwise. Uh, that's it. Hell yeah, my man. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks again, Joel.